Hey everyone, Chaz here from Electric Owl Works, and I am with Chuli. And we are in Springville, New York, getting some provisions for building out our treehouse room, which is a Studio B control room at Electric Owl Works. So stick around for our journey, we're heading home. JJ here. Thanks so much for tuning in. As we finish our drive back to the studio, let me tell you a little bit about what we're up to. Late last year, we moved into the new place full time and we've been busy with renovations. We want our visitors to have an inspiring, creative space to work in where they feel safe, comfortable, and immersed in an environment dedicated to producing amazing art. Of course, we're also quite busy with the recording studio. This video will be the first part of a mini-series covering what we're doing with the Treehouse Room, which is Studio B at Electric Owl Works. This space was previously a guest room of the home's former owner, Dr. Morand. Our vision is to create a control room in this space that's suitable for mixing, as well as songwriting, pre-production, overdub, and podcast sessions. So we're here back at the studio and finding our kitties well and fine. Foxy checking out the wildlife and Missy taking a little cat nap. And now here's Chucky in the treehouse room. And we are home, checked on the cats, everything's okay. So welcome to the treehouse room, which is Studio B at Electric Owl Works. And uh, I'll show you some B-roll stuff from yesterday, but uh, basically what we are in is a 12 by 18 foot room with a uh, eight foot seven inch ceilings back here that gently slope down to the front. That is about 3.6 meters wide by five and a half meters long and about 2.6 meters tall back here. So here's, here's the layout of the room with Julie working in the front end. And as you can see, the ceiling gently slopes down. And there's Julie. And you can also see where we've ripped out all the drywall and insulation up there. Also took out all of the staples that would have, and nails that would have sharp edges as we're putting in the um, those lip mask bags. This was all packed with uh, old 1970s insulation. This roof, the ceiling you see above us, is, it was actually the external roof at one point, and then an addition was put on that encapsulated that. So above these planks you see right here, there's still roofing material, and then another six or eight feet of attic space with a lot of insulation on top of it. So up above this is like a giant base trap, which is awesome. The first layer closest to the ceiling is going to be a layer of acoustic pads or lint mass bags, kind of modeled after the, uh, the Shadow Acoustic product. And then the next layer down toward us will be a layer of uh, rock wool. Under that will be a layer of rock board, which is a more rigid rock wool uh, product, uh, similar to you know, a rigid product like Owen's uh, 703. So something along those lines. And then it's all gonna get finished off with uh, Guilford Amain uh, fabric, which is awesome. And we've got yards and yards and yards of it in the other room that we got from GIK Acoustics. Uh, the plan is to set up our new RAB studio desk here in the front end. With uh, two sets of speakers, a subwoofer, and uh, what we've done is we've already kind of measured out some stuff based on the Carl Tatz spreadsheet that's freely available from his website. And if you look on the floor here, you can see some pieces of tape that we have. So this piece of red tape right here 
is the start of the good listening spot zone. And then there's a piece of green tape here that's the uh, end of it. And the sweet spot is right about in the center here where the blue piece of tape is. So uh, each of these pieces of tape represent a, a null point. Um, this one's about 54 inches back at, at the red, and I believe that nulls out at around 63 hertz, which is bad because you don't hear your bass drum. And the one up here is at about 81 inches from the front wall. So um, the trick is to find a sweet spot between the null points uh, so you don't have as many acoustic issues in the room. And then of course the uh, points of first and second reflection on the walls will be treated as well. And I already have a bunch of acoustic panels from GIK that we are gonna use for that. They're uh, bigger, thicker bass traps, so that's great. Julie is continuing to stuff steel wool in the cavities and she's already stapled some aluminum screening in there. So the entire perimeter is going to get trimmed out and then we can start stuffing the uh, lint mask bag and uh, take it from there. Okay, so can you explain your strategy for sealing the rafters? Uh, I'm sealing the rafters against uh, critters like chipmunks and mice, possibly squirrels, baby squirrels that could get in there and nest because rodents don't really like things that they, well, they like to chew and they don't like things like metal, steel wool. Screening is really good too. So where we're putting the sound damping insulation, we don't want critters to get in there and all that or chew it up or nest in there. So I'm just putting this around all of the crevices and cracks because those little critters can really squeeze into small spaces. So you'll see I did it up there in the rafters already. I put in, stapled in some screening there. It just deters them from wanting to cut their teeth in it. It doesn't totally prohibit it, but it, it, they, would, they would prefer finding something nicer to put their teeth in. So, so you do that. And then I have some acoustic caulk, which is down here. I don't think there's a label on it, but it's acoustic. Called draft and acoustical cock so so I'm going to put it in all of the cracks in, all, in, in everywhere that I'm not putting screening I'm putting the steel wool and the little cracks and crevices and kind of pushing it in anywhere that there's a crack and then I'll use the cock and I'll put cock over it so we have an acoustical barrier too All right, well, that was a high-level overview of what we're doing in the Treehouse Room Studio B at Electric Outworks. In the next video, Julie and I would like to show you how we're handling the installation of the acoustic treatments. So how we're dealing with fabricating bass traps and the installation, all that good stuff. Should be fun. Well, that wraps things up for this episode. Thanks so much for watching. And we want to thank our long-term subscribers and our new ones for sticking around with us. We know we haven't put out much content since last June, but we've been pretty busy with moving into this wonderful new place. And I got COVID twice. I fell down the stairs. I busted up my leg and uh, I've just been busy with mixing and mastering. So thanks again. We're really excited to share our progress with you. And as always, this is Chaz from Electric Outworks. Peace, love, and Ringo. Be good to each other. We are out of here.